and we're going. Finally, alas, LCC Left Coast Caveman number 7070. Can you believe? We're three quarters of the way to 100, and maybe by 100, we'll have 100 people in the cave. If you go to leftcoastcaveman.com, click join the cave. Left Coast Caveman is supreme being through modern hunting and gathering. Modern hunting and gathering here on the cast, we discuss nutritional modalities, fitness modalities, and mentalities, codify those in the format of programs. And if you go to join the cave right here, right now, some free from some free stuff, perhaps, some free entry, some free swag, some free information. What we do here at the cave, making wellness more practical and accessible. So on the battlefront against influencer influenza, all of the information out there that promotes fear for the sake of selling products. We are that is the antithesis of what we do. We make it practical and accessible for everybody. We do deep dives into this wellness business and put those in the format for people that are practical, accessible, easy to implement, easy to use. Our first macro program is Primal Primers, implying just that, just the base level. We talked about that last week and we will continue to talk about that, but that's just things that people should do every single day as on their path to supreme being, on better, better living, more energy, more peace, well-being, wellness. Stemming off of last week, and we talk about kind of left coast and caveman and that, that dichotomy put together in the format of, you know, caveman obviously implies the, the more primal state, the what human beings ought to be doing, the primal primers, the, the clear evidence of which is better well-being, the surviving and thriving of the species and that what we can determine just based on practical knowledge of of human human beings and what human beings are doing. But then the other part of that, left coast, implies more techno technology research. All that's available to us right now. We don't we don't hunt and gather in the fields of the savanna anymore, on the fields of the plain. Though we could and should if we can and will. But oftentimes we find ourselves hunting and gathering in grocery stores, farmers markets, things of that nature, and finding ourselves needing to research more modalities that are available to us right now. And I, I would say that I usually, I think, with regard to our personalities too, it's, it's funny how this project has come together serendipitously in that I think I err more on the side of, we're both both, right? But I, I think we're both left coast and both cavemen, but I'm definitely more of the caveman type in terms of my cognitive ability to deep dive into the nutritional i think you you are i consider you the more expert information provider when it comes to the left coast caveman way of life and and those technicalities and the scientific underpinnings of why we do what we do and why it's effective and that has been really helpful to me on this path and again, we do this for ourselves, not for the, the, the outcome of it is that it's beneficial to our audience and the people that have joined the cave. But the purpose behind it has always been that you and I just get together and research these things. And it's always been that way to me, that you've been like this, this powerhouse and this juggernaut of information. And when we, it, when we first did that, that Spartan World Championships together and just your ability to to deep dive into these things. If you go to leftcoastcaveman.com, I think 99 or if not 100% of the articles right now are written by you and your ability to, to research these topics. And so we left off last week and talking about eat the earth modality and how eat the earth in the while we're hunting and gathering is the first step. And go back to LCC, Left Coast Cave, cast number 69, and you can unpack that a little bit organic non-organic from farmers market from from the grocery store how are we gathering and, and hunting and then the next step is okay well when you get it where do we go from here is there i mean you you hunt and gather in the grocery store and every uh, every vegetable that you get is triple washed ready to use um and we sort of landed at that on the 30 minute mark we were like well Perhaps there's some benefit to not washing 
or, or if we're if we're talking about hunting and gathering vegetables and fruits in particular, is there something to the fact that all this stuff that we get in the modern grocery, in the modern hunting and gathering environment is triple rush, uh, triple washed and super pristine and all everything is clean and we I was talking about how I wash my vegetables and what I do once I get them to the cave. Uh, versus if you're growing them at the cave, is it necessary to wash? And so that was the where we left last week and where I'll kick it off to you, Sir Sylvester. Yeah, I, I think that's always been a bit of my niche is I like to more thoroughly understand the why behind what we do. And m- much much as it is almost it seems eloquent that there's so many different systems and instincts within all of us and trying to understand like the historical context and the reason behind why we have these instincts, why we have these proclivities and um, diving into the why behind a lot of what we do. And I feel like it's super helpful, especially nowadays, as there's many different um, proprietary whys on why you should consume this, that, this supplement, this organic item, you know, the the possibilities are endless. And I I think that's where we try to really discern the truth behind, at least the best we very much can, the truth behind um, so many of these nutritional modalities, these mentalities, and to provide us all along the context of, you know, ancestral um, ideas of how th- how humans once survived and thrived and juxtaposing that to today with the left coast aspect of it, where that's the technology and the the differences in how we hunt and gather today um oftentimes being more convenient but at what peril and that's kind of what we sift through on the weekly and in between these uh these casts you know you and i having that that consistent dialogue with between ourselves and the rest of the cave um and yeah and what we landed on last week which you know and it actually influenced my behavior throughout this whole week and i i think i i recall seeing one of your videos uh on potatoes this has been a very root oriented uh week uh, from a nutritional perspective uh, uh i think both of us have a, a, a pretty hefty cache of uh, root vegetables be it potatoes beets carrots onions garlic uh, so on and so forth and i saw that video you washing your potato and i thought about why what's the reason we wash our vegetables and i and, and i'll get to because i think there is a, there's a few practical reasons especially nowadays why we would do that and but also like, okay, why do we do that? And did our ancestors do that? Did they waste potable water, which who knows, could have been could have been quite a, um, a valuable resource at the time. Would they have, have essentially dispelled it on to, to rinse off you know, dirt from say a potato that they, a tuber that they just um, dug from underground. And my thought on that is like, is there anything wrong with a dirty potato? You know, dirty potatoes. And, um, and we all, we were all very aware of uh, the fact that the soil contains many different bacterias and many of them being good for us. We are mostly bacterial beings. We are fungal beings. We are bacterial beings. We have more bacterial DNA than we actually have of human DNA, which is something that I allow that to flow off my tongue with fluency, even though I don't quite understand how that's even possible, but um, that's a, a science, right? Um, but just think it through while we wash a potato, um, especially an organic potato, um, are we removing some of that beneficial bacteria? And my my thought on that is yes, and maybe we shouldn't. And so that's kind of something I've been doing more of is eating dirty vegetables. As uh, and, and that might be kind of controversial, but the other side to it as well is okay. Why would you want to potentially wash a vegetable? Well, if it's doused in a bunch of pesticides, maybe there's ability to like wash that away and limit your exposure. So that's a pro to washing, and also in terms of supply chain, right? The people, machines picking these items. Um, you know, who knows if uh, certain bad bacteria get on that? You know, like obviously if you use the bathroom, then you go and pick certain vegetables and such. And I'm not sure if that's even how they do a lot of it still by by hand picking, but you could, you know, pick up different um, uh, more nefarious bacterial strains. And next thing you know, you're uh, you're shooting water out the tailpipe, you know? Yeah. And I think part of what we always try to accomplish through these cave conversations, through the cast, is to arrive at an implementation. And similar to last week, if you think about our way of life existing on a continuum and our way of life supreme being being 
implying that there are levels to it and it's not going and what we want to avoid is always is what influencer influenza does is promote something such as oh yeah there's pesticides all over your vegetables and fruits and therefore you should never eat them or there's phytochemicals in your vegetables and fruits and therefore you should buy my carnivore diet book and follow my carnivore diet and buy the carnivore uh products that i'm promoting and what we try to promote or what we promote at left coast caveman is Yes, there's this path of supreme being through modern hunting and gathering, and there are a, a variety of modalities that you should use. And similar to how we landed at the implementation of Eat the Earth, it's if it's practical and accessible to you to bump up into organic and certified organic that wouldn't contain those harmful pesticides and chemicals, that perhaps that's an option. And then perhaps pairing that with a washing technique that's just very minimal, very just you know, rinsing it off quickly with clean water versus scrubbing it down. But if you're all the way at the apex phase of things, which is our highest level of macro programming, and you're, you're procuring these in the true eat the earth modality, such as you do by caveifying your, the Crockett Cave and growing them right there in your, in your environment, and you're familiar with the constituents of that soil and that they're that it's clean, that perhaps washing all the time isn't necessary. Grabbing it straight from the garden and chopping it up and putting it in your your salad is not a problem. That's what I do too. I've got an herb garden right behind me at the left at, at you know the the Disco Bay Cave, and I I never wash those. I just pluck them right out of the out of the soil in which they come and 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 um, put them right into the into the food and. And so we have to arrive some at some level of implementation of wash washing the vegetables and I've in this process of researching it and discovering it for myself thought of a couple different things and and one is that um, mineral deficiency is a real thing in in people I'm dealing with it right now in cave operations one of my children continue I mean it's hard to get children to eat a lot of minerals for one they're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and and yeah, you are the the mineral composition of soil is something that we all we're all aware of, and there, it has been noted through influencer influenza. I would say particularly about the the mineral deficiency could perhaps it, it, the mineral deficiency in standard diet or standard nutritional protocols could be there could be a factor to the to that we don't eat the earth anymore. That could be a factor. And so with that, all that being said, what are the, if you can't grow in your own environment, what could be some of the, the modalities that you could implement to ensure that you're getting, that you're getting the, the, the most nutritional benefit from, I'd say, fruits and vegetables particularly? Yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think a, a few heuristics that I landed on for this would be, okay, in general, root vegetables, obviously a theme for uh, the last few weeks for us, and, and a, probably a more broad theme from a, uh, a wintertime perspective, considering when rooted vegetables are harvested and how they, how they take into season, um, those items come from underground. And I feel like, especially in the organic sense, and maybe even so in the non-organic sense, that those would be a little more... I would say um, lesser exposed to the pathogens of humans and from, you know, feces contamination from people picking and whatnot. It's probably a safer bet that if you get something that was picked from underground, it spent the majority of its time not accumulating all sorts of different pathogens, at least negatively speaking. And I think you would you would be more encouraged and myself included my my uh, modality of this is uh, I don't wash those items. I don't wash my onions. I don't wash garlic. I don't wash um potatoes any longer i don't wash carrots and if there's a little bit of dirt on it i say great that's going to me you know now you're back to the tenet of eating the earth you really truly are eating the earth you are getting more of those minerals you are getting more of those bacterial colonies those good bacteria colonies that we've uh survived and thrived with probably for thousands and thousands of years now on the flip side if you're looking at a tomato that's or a berry that's not organic yeah i'd, I'd probably wash that you know, I think just to get rid of, you know, any uh, at least to ameliorate the pesticide uh, concentrations. And then also those are items that are sitting out that are 
Uh, I just I feel like would be more exposed potentially, and there could be some issues there. And but the middle ground then would say, well, what about say those same two items, but organic, right? So now you don't have that pesticide uh, contamination issue. And you know, I I, I myself, I'm probably not going to wash those. I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of uh, of caution on that one and not wash. I'm gonna eat dirty fruits and vegetables. I like that, and that's simple, easy, practical, accessible for everybody to implement. And for so for an implementation, I, I especially like what you said about root veggies and and yeah, if you can if, go into the farmer's market, um, a lot of the times I think you can avoid some of the premiums that are associated in the grocery stores with certified organic and, and organic. And we'll have this all up at leftcoastcaveman.com. In our nutritional and cave culinary sections, we'll have some nutritional guides with some ability for you to kind of mitigate what is more practical and accessible. And, and a couple notes that we, we touched on at 69, uh, Cast 69, is this idea of eat the earth also implying like seasonality. And you mentioned root vegetables. And there's a great article at leftcoastkman.com about the nutritional benefits of eating those root vegetables written by Sir Sylvester himself. Um, and that those are always very good to 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 review in response to some of this information. But I want to touch a little bit on. So I, I did a little bit of research and digging on this the, the 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 mineral constituencies of soil. And so soil is primarily made up of feldspar, micas, and quartz. Calcium and some of the nutrition mic, micronutrients within those: calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, iodine, and one of the so some of the most deficient the most mineral deficiencies are in iron iodine magnesium and calcium so there is some sort of a correlation there but i want to throw a curveball in your direction um because i think that this is practical and accessible for most people for most pe people practical and accessibility would be eat organic eat certified organic and if you're going to wash i would say let's let's also review our primal primers on water and the quality of water would apply. I, I, the quality of water applies to washing for me as well. I, I take cautionary note to use clean drinking water, water that I feel confident putting into my body. I use for washing vegetables as well. And if I don't want to waste a lot of it, like you mentioned, ancestors wouldn't have wasted it. I'll just get a bucket. I'll get a bowl and just kind of wash them off with my hands in that in that in that container of water. And so it's still keep some of the trace minerals but here's a curveball think about our our and i thought about what you put in that article too uh, on root vegetables and just the how long they last and how that that's indicator that's a cave indicator of well yeah it's seasonal right before the winter food is going to be scarce and it is they preserve well but then what did human beings come up with as a preservation method. Oh, fermentation. And how do you ferment vegetables? You soak them in 2% of a salt solution. And what has all 84 trace minerals, essential minerals? Pink Himalayan salt. And so perhaps another cave implementation of this modality, let's say if you want to get potatoes and buy them by the 50 pound bag uh, for $14.99, which is what I did, or a cabbage for 97 cents rather than buying the organic cabbage. What could be perhaps fermentation is another method through which you can retain its nutritional value and boost its nutritional value at that while retaining the, the, while retaining the nutritional benefits of the trace minerals and removing through the lactic acid fermentation process removes a lot of the harmful chemicals. I was reading that, uh, and this is at revolutionfermentation.com I shouldn't plug other people's websites I should put it put a put an article up at leftcoatscaveman.com disseminating this information and the benefits of fermentation are you're going to retain all of the the you're going to retain all of the beneficial nutrients while adding vitamin C vitamin B vitamin K removing cyanide removing phytates removing all of this stuff, and it also there's at PubMed. I was reading some PubMed stuff too that it, if there are trace amounts of pesticide, on 
or harmful bacteria, you mentioned like some of the like E. coli or something like that, that the lac through the lactic acid fermentation process re removes that as well, reduces that to a, almost a minuscule amount. And so you're sort of keeping it cave by using ancient technology of, of preservation, but also boosting the nutritional benefits, removing the harmful bacteria and chemicals from the product and enhancing the mineral content of it. So that's what I'll be doing wow. this afternoon. Yeah. Wow, that, that's awesome, man. I mean, talk about eloquent systems, right? The fact that in these specific uh, root vegetables that through the decaying process, they're made safer and more nutritious, right? Like, I mean, how do you design a system that awesome, that just well-greased? I mean, that, that's an amazing piece. I mean, and we all know, I mean, you don't have to be very much in the, the – um, the, the, the subject of health and wellness to know that um, fermented foods are awesome for you for just a litany of different reasons. And I, I mean, you just kind of schooled me on a few of those to say it at the least. And uh, and there's so many ways to get fermented vegetables. I mean, you don't have to do it yourself, but to your point, I, I suspect you might be doing that also. Um, you may be fermenting. I mean, I myself am fermenting some beer right now, but a different, it's a different source of uh, type of fermenting kind of just minus the, the salts and such. But so are, what are, you got something uh, that you're fermenting uh, this weekend? Is, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, pretty much everything that I, that I, so I bought in bulk. I bought, um, I'm not going to ferment the potatoes. I'm not even sure that that, well, you could ferment potatoes and ferment, fermenting potatoes removes a lot of the uh, cyanide. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll probably, maybe I'll throw some potatoes in there because I've yeah. been doing a lot of potatoes, but uh, cabbage, carrots, and beets, and they're, they're all in season right now. And so, eating the earth, eating in season, and I'm going to ferment them. I'm impatient, um, but I don't want them to go to waste. And so, I'll, I'll I'll ferment them just to so I can eat them ongoing. But um, yeah, I love that it, when you say an eloquent system, but also just note this. I think it's it's part of what we do at left coast caveman is deconstructing all that's been built around us in terms of what's what's been called good and pointing back to ancient technologies that are actually good and why they're good dips into the left coast the left coast um component of it is just digging through the science of why but i would assume that people could could probably just look at the fruits of of what like what civilizations have and this is probably part of research that we could follow up on next time but in the blue zones of the world or the places that haven't been overly bombarded with influencer influenza and these ideas of longevity and biohacking and these things that they're cool and they're interesting and they're and they're informational and they've launched us into this very life unifying purpose project of ours but it's also i think done a lot of damage to removing just the simplicity of the technologies that have been with us for so long and i bet i bet people just looked at some of the civilizations that never bought on to all of this new new age biohacking stuff that they're in fact living longer by just by just living longer by by just adhering to ancient technologies. But that brings me to a, an important quote that I want to read for us today with regard to that subject. Um, because I think you'll find it interesting because this idea of like biohacking and living longer, well, that's, that's what influencer or influenza is all about. But listen to this. People are waking up to the truth that sustained happiness requires definition of health that goes far beyond the expectations of prior generations. Rather than simply pursuing a body and mind free from disease, they are pursuing a vision of health that optimizes every facet of their lives. We refer to that as life unifying purpose. Addressing their whole person and increases their resilience to disease. People are looking for health that not only gives more years in, the, in their lives, but also more life in their years. And look at influencer influenza. They're only following. I, I I see they're only doing the first part of that. The more more years in their lives, 
Whereas this simplistic approach or this eloquent system of this ancient technologies that we're discovering and, oh, did you know that fermentation also can retain all of the nutritional benefits or eating the earth is, it's like we talked last week, it's that positive energy of going out into your own garden in your own driveway and cultivating your own vegetables that adds more life to your years. It's, it's both. It's, it's that positive energy and that positive ecosystem of discovering, rediscovering, I would say that those, that DNA that's in all of us. And I think that's what Primal Primers is all about. And that's what we are promoting at leftcoastcayman.com right now as our soon launch into the Primal Primers program. You go to join the cave and you'll get a free copy of the beta system. But that's, that is essentially it. It's all of these long forgotten primal instincts and that's written in our DNA for so long that we've covered up with all of this new technology. And now we're wanting to uncover that. And in that process, you add more life to your years and more years to your life. That's a really profound quote at the end. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more out of a life, right? I mean, if you think about the the most valuable currency, really, it is like your time here and how good you feel during that time, right? I, I, and obviously, you can't put a dollar sign on it, although most industry has in terms of selling you items that can, that that purport to give you more of both of those things. Although it's not, it's not that simple, but it actually is that simple. And if you think about you're hunting and gathering at the grocery store and what a modern convenience it is. And it really is a amazing uh, sight to behold. When you walk into that grocery store, those doors slide open and you're thrust into this air, just this warehouse of possibilities and foods, anything from any type of taste from sweet to salty to sour to you name it, this whole just magical place. And, and just at the flip of a card, it, it, you could take it with you. You know, you can bring it back to your cave. But you think about the damage that has also done in terms of how many items you were distracted with, you know, how many excess items are in mean, most of that store you shouldn't eat. If you think about it back to, you know, just say that the tenant of plants and animals, and I'm not saying all that stuff's bad, but if you go back to basics, which arguably is probably one of the, the less sexy ways of, 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 of supplementing your life in terms of like, if you eat plants and animals, chances are you will have more life. Chances are you will have more quality of life, right? And so we're distracted. Most people are distracted by all these things and claims. And before you know it, maybe you skip right past that that cold section of fermented kimchi or fermented uh, cabbage. And instead you're in the middle aisles, you know, getting some cookies that are organic and vegan and grass fed. And you're like, yeah, that's that's what I need. <laughs> I mean, what? What a trap we've constructed for ourselves. But that's that's OK, because here at Left Coast Caveman, we'll help you. Uh, Dig yourself out. Indeed, we will keep it cave all the way, keeping it cave. And I've I've found it's funny that you bring that up because I was just in a conversation with somebody this week talking about enjoyment. We talk about new, we talk about debauchery modalities, and we we would both concede that that is an, a source of enjoyment sometimes. And but I notice the more I keep it cave, the more I adhere to some of these primal to all primal primers all the time and keep it cave and the more i adhere to these more nuanced sapien strength modalities the more adding on more technology and then of course the more i work towards apex phase which is everything is working towards this life unifying purpose and i'm keeping it cave all the time i get less enjoyment out of the debauchery modalities and in fact I, it it flips that paradigm of enjoyment for me where I wake up from a debauchery modality or from smashing a chocolate cake and I say to myself I've enjoyed life so much more when I, while I was keeping a cave I'd enjoy so much more out of that jar of kimchi because I know the, nour the nourishing benefits of it and if I eat the earth every day and it's plants and animals and I know the source and it's a good quality source just the the, the positive energy of life that that gives me, the life in my years rather than the years in my life, or both at the same time, let's say, I get so much more enjoyment. That is That becomes the enjoyment. And the, the cake becomes the... The cake becomes... The... I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's a very 
temporary enjoyment, but it's not like an all uplifting energy, positive energy forming enjoyment. And that's what we seek to, to bring people and we will bring it to people in both the digital format at leftcoastcaveman.com. Go and get your digital copies. Go join the cave, enter the cave on site hunting and gathering modality learning grounds that we will bring to our audience at leftcoastcaveman.com. All of the things that are part of keeping it cave. And that will lead to a more enjoyable supreme being, state of supreme being. How could it not? I intentionally used our nutritional modality glyph. And part of the Left Coast Caveman system, you'll notice, it's a very complex system, such as the system of life. And as you learn, as you earn, as you go through these programs and learn these modalities, you will earn yourself pieces of these glyphs. But the nutritional modality glyph is that which you're seeing behind me, and that was intentionally put there today. It all starts with nutrition. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I couldn't think of a more powerful lever to push and pull at any given time in terms of trying to adjust your um, amount of life here and the uh, the depth of life that you live. And back to your point of how you kind of feel and think about how you feel after that indulgence sometimes. And I, I, I maybe only speak for myself in this, but there's a bit of remorse at times, you know, when you come off of say, you know, however many days you go without having a beer or having some cake or some added sugar or whatnot, and then you have it, you indulge and hopefully you enjoy that, that temporary pleasure. And then the next day, when you wake up, there's like a tinge of remorse that I certainly feel like, hmm, okay, back on track. Uh, I need, you know, almost like an alcoholic with like their chips. And as soon as you have a bender, you're like, damn it, back to day one. And, um, you know, th there is this, I guess, in the fast of these, these, these impurities, the fast of these, uh, these non-health forward items, these things that don't give you life, um, like you kind of, you, you feel it. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you get a sense of accomplishment, a set, almost like a workout. I think more of a long-term perspective, kind of like a workout. How, how do you feel after a workout? Like during the workout, you don't feel very good, right? It sucks. It's not great. You're out of breath. You're hurting. It's it's not enjoyable. But after you have this afterburn effect, right? That lasts probably all throughout the day, especially if you do this day in and day out throughout the weeks. Like you just feel good because you know you're doing the right thing. You're building towards something, and all there's this cascade of positivity. Um, it's more you're it's this temporary pain for long term um long term gain in essence and you think about the the converse of that when you eat say a piece of cake or you have you know 12 shots of tequila you're you're essentially like you're flipping the script as in like you're getting this very temporary sense of pleasure and an enjoyment for more of a long term sense of damn i can't believe i did that like i got to get back on track or maybe you don't get back on track or you know what i mean like it's it's there's something too, like, I, 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 I feel good. Like, I'm like, oh man, like I, I've gotten that out of my system. I don't need that. And like, every once in a while you do indulge, indulge and that's totally cool too. And then you got to get back. But I, I do feel that, that slight bit of remorse almost every single time. It's like, oh dude, like you can't be doing that. You know that and it's a good system because then, you know, what happens is I'm, I continue forward with my, you know, my current nutritional strategies. Like, yeah, that's not a part of my life. I don't do that often. And um, there, there is certainly a psychological uh, ebb and flow when it comes to those items, especially upon indulgence. Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought that up because that's what Left Coast Caveman is all about too. It's the community. It's the apex actualization community. You are on the path of supreme being with other people. And your supreme being alliance, for instance, you and I, once you have a life unifying purpose with somebody, well, that's what I like about our system versus something like an Alcoholics Anonymous. It's, it's not a starting over. You don't cash in and start over. It's that's why we have debauchery modality as part of our as part of our deal. Enjoy it. Drink drink those beers. Laugh. Live. Have some fun. But what then becomes the mark of your life? And that's why it's so important to have that community. It's like if that becomes a mark of your life, if all of a sudden I'm not getting any more texts from you about your ten thousand steps or your sweat to your wet or your get up and move or you're not hitting your primal primers, then I'm like, dude, you're not keeping it cave. And that's what keeping a cave is all about is that have room for debauchery, but understand that the true enjoyment comes when you're actually working towards your life unifying purpose and recognizing that it is debauchery, that it's not going to be something that 
It's a temporary departure from your life unifying purpose, and you have to define it as such. The true enjoyment is not in the debauchery. It's it's the getting right back on the path, and that's what. And like I get the same little bit of remorse, but it's it's more of less than remorse. I think implies a little bit of regret or guilt. I don't feel that as much as I feel the the pressing desire to okay, I've taken I've taken the step off the path, but I know where the path is. It's at leftcoastcaveman.com, and I jump right back on. It's in primal primers. It's it's going towards and through sapien strength all the way to apex, and it's it's the apex phase that we're looking for. It's that okay, now this is our life. And debauchery modality is just that. It's a quick, simple departure. Other than that, keep it cave. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't stray too far from the path. You might not find a way back. <laughs> and you might you you need somebody that's there as a guiding light to you to show you back to show you back onto the path. I've taken straight up weeks of debauchery and then you know, it's between you and BG sending me stuff that I'm like, okay, I'm not I'm not realizing my potentiality. I'm not on the path towards supreme being. It's recognizing that. It's recognizing that this is not relationships, items, activities, objects. They're either moving you towards your path or you're not. And it's, it, it requires brutal honesty to, to look at it and say, that's not. So that's a debauchery modality. One minute left. Yeah, I mean that. Talk talk about a hallmark of primal primers. You know, essentially like the DNA of left coast caveman. It's like, dude, it it is brutal honesty in terms of you know what's moving you forward and what isn't, and calibrating, helping you gain awareness as to what things are going to propel you forward and which things like are not. And you have to have awareness of like the impact those practices or lack of practices are having on your surviving and thriving. Boom. Keep it cave. Yep.